You're listening to the Casting for Fun podcast, the show that talks about entertainment, sports, music, and inspirational stories for all to enjoy. We're glad you could join us today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, here is your host, Albert Pineda. This is the Casting for Fun podcast. I am your host, Albert Pineda, and this is episode 84 of the show for uh, Wednesday... August the 16th, 2023. Happy birthday to my wonderful, amazing wife, Allison. I'm so grateful to be your husband. I'm so grateful to be the father of your kids and so grateful to have you in my life. Uh, today's going to be a fun day celebrating you uh, for your birthday. We're going to be doing a, a day trip to Disneyland in the morning and early afternoon. And then the evening, we're going to be seeing uh, Les Miserables at the Pantages in Hollywood. So looking forward to that. Actually, it's going to be a really great day for you. I mean, I'm sure it's probably the number one thing you would want to do on your birthday. Go to Disneyland and then go see a show at the Pantages Theater. Uh, anyway, so uh, for this week's episode, it's a really great reunion episode for good friends of mine from Temple City. Uh, Jeff Haskins, who's been on the show numerous times. Nick Turner, obviously, has been on many times. Uh, Derek Dupre has been on as well. And for the first time, Tad Turner uh, will be joining us on the Casting for Fun podcast. Uh, the first of many, I hope, for Tad. Uh, definitely would love to pick his brain on uh, Dodger Talk with him. But anyway, so the five of us get together to reminisce about our times together in uh, the Temple City Ward for the Young, the young Men's Program. Uh, we reminisce some funny, great times. It's actually a kind of a chaotic uh, conversation where i mean me as the host i'm pretty much useless there's there's no there's no point to <laughs> i mean it's just a general conversation uh with friends reminiscing rather than the kind of like an interview style which is what i usually do for episodes of the podcast uh but this episode i think turned out really great uh, in fact allison was listening in on the whole uh recording and she was kind of trying to hide her laughter uh fortunately my microphone didn't pick her up because she was laughing several times during the episode she pointed out to me she thought it was actually the best episode i've ever recorded uh which is high praise coming from allison so i'm very grateful that i had the opportunity to catch up with my brothers and uh looking forward to doing it again with them in the future and uh a lot of our jokes yes are kind of inside jokes but i think the uh, most of the listeners who aren't familiar with us and our, our humor will still find it entertaining and fun, which is the, the whole purpose. So so here we go. This is my conversation with Nick Turner, Tad Turner, Derek Dupre, and Jeff Haskins on the Casting for Fun podcast. So joining me tonight, Nick Turner, Tad Turner, Derek Dupre, Jeff Haskins. Gentlemen, how is everyone doing tonight? Excellent. Very good. Good, good. Awesome. It's good to see everyone looks healthy and well. Yep. Uh, I had a dicey chimichanga in Albuquerque, New Mexico a couple days ago. So if I have to make a run for it and the screen goes blank for a few minutes, that's what's going on. What happened? You <laughs> used to have the toughest gut in the world. Yeah, used to. New stuff. New stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving little bits of it behind everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, normally for these podcasts, I mean, as the host, I usually come up with a couple of talking points and questions to ask, but this is a really unique experience that we have all of us together for the first time in quite a while. So I don't even think we really need me as the host. I think we can almost just let the conversation flow naturally. What everybody wants to bring up is totally fine. We, we should probably figure out what Derek's done to maintain his hairline. <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's genetics, this, my friend. This that's, has highlighted that's, the fact that none of us, none of the rest of us uh, have a real yeah. brush full of hair. That's a, that's a capital G Gaston genetics. Right? Uh, <laughs> collapse! That's true, come to think of it. I, I deal, I, I work a lot with uh, Derek's uncle. And uh, that Back is a hilly dude. You don't hmm? see no bald spots anywhere. No, <laughs> no. That's and we don't drive. We don't drive micro buses either, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> don't neuter our trucks. <laughs> well, you gotta try it. You gotta try it. You, you gotta, you I'm good. I'm good. A freshly neutered truck, man. It, it, it's, a, it's a free, it's a very free experience. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> very nice. Very you nice. You know what? I, I we're coming to Texas in um that we'll be there the 6th of september and i'll be on your doorstep with my neuter truck and uh -huh. we're going to take a ride and we'll see 
how you like it. <laughs> that sounds a little creepy. It's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. Is he going to have to talk to the bishop after? Yeah. You can talk to him right now. <laughs> you can you can you can prepay for those things now. <laughs> hey hey guys, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's just calm down, you know. You should be ashamed of yourself. And if you're not ashamed, you should be more ashamed. Oh my goodness. Uh, I was gonna I was wondering how long it was gonna take for that line to appear on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. September sixth, it's on. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I think it. I think it's going to be the sixth. Uh, we're leaving on the on whatever Labor Day is, the fifth. So maybe the seventh. But I've got like five days to kill, and then we're driving to North Carolina from there. So sweet. I'll be coming by. I'll see both of you guys. Oh, what are you doing? Station. What are you doing, Nick? Uh, I work. Uh, I do install security systems, residential homes. Oh. Yeah, you know what? You got a good look about you for that. You can go to anybody's door and say, hey, I think you should have some security right now. <laughs> I learned from the best. What can I say? <laughs> the headset, though. The headset. It, it gets you. <laughs> Someone's got to be semi-professional here. Oh, is that a headset? I thought that was some kind of implant. <laughs> Not yet. Elon hasn't gotten there yet. We don't have the Neuralink. That's why I was thinking Dad's sporting some nice earrings too. That's oh, my. Yeah, they're taking out the Julio Rios pitch tonight, and so you're trying to emulate him with those uh those Hey, they earrings. won. They won. That's all that matters. That day, Very true. You're right. You're after eight in a row. Eight in a row. Best yeah, they're in, playing well. Best in baseball right now. Yeah, they're yep. playing real well. Yep. Yep. I I love the fact that Joe Kelly's back. I, I know, too, man. I would have, I would have paid part of his just to have him back. He's so much fun. He is right off you heard the bat. Right. Yeah. We well, heard he's on the injured list. He went on there today. Yeah, I know. Kind of bum me out. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There was an article about how he he had to save the uh, the mariachi the mariachi yeah. jacket. <laughs> Someone that's trying to steal it or take it from his locker. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Hey, Derek, if you're not uh, familiar with that, this is we're talking about baseball. <laughs> I, didn't know. I, didn't, I didn't want to go over your head on that. I so, don't know what you're talking the, about. The Dodgers, Los Dodgers. Oh, Los Dodgers. Do 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 okay, I got you. I got okay, you. he's got it. I had to go check out and see if his mural is still standing. Uh, I'm assuming it is, right? Go pay a visit, take a picture. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. You ought to send it to me if you do. Yeah, maybe maybe this week I'll maybe try and make a visit if I have time. It, it's tough with uh, with kids in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, okay, well, I guess we can kind of keep the episode somewhat structured because I do have a a, a general question I wanted to bring up to everybody. So uh, when I had Jeff on previously, he you kind of went over the history of how you got uh, called in to serve as our young men's leader. So I wanted to touch a base a little bit more on that because again, as you mentioned, our group of guys we kind of had a bad reputation, right? Uh, based on what previous leaders had said about us, I think so, it was uh, it was actually Tad's group that had a bad oh. reputation. <laughs> no, we're we're looking we're looking at the prime suspect right here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, just, we're just missing one. <laughs> yeah, Matt Parson. <laughs> yeah, we're just missing Matt, the <laughs> guy with the uh, creative handshake. Um, <laughs> So yeah, I wanted to take the time just to reflect back on those early days in 1995 when you were first called as our uh, young men's president. Yeah, you know that was like one of my first big person calling. I think I I was called to be a primary teacher and I taught Tad and Fernando. Remember that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I taught I taught you guys um, for I don't know just a few months I think. Yeah, not and long then, at all. Yeah, and, and we had a reputation in primary of driving teachers out. Oh. Well, the only reason I left is because they called me to do something else. Yeah, oh, and that was that was before the Church Institute background checks on leadership. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. You're right. You're right. You know what? I get I get an update on that all the time. In. They they keep they keep sending me messages from the church saying, "Are you sure? <laughs> Are you certain? You have something to do with Derek?" <laughs> oh man! Nah, it it. Uh, well, those were freer times, Derek. You are correct. It was uh, it was one of those situations where if you said yes, uh, that was enough. <laughs> I don't remember what I did between the time. That was I, like my first marriage. 
Uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> You know that's funny. Hello. It's like, it's, it's like my my son, my son. Mm. Um, you know, he he came back from his mission, and uh, we got him up at BYU. And after about fifteen minutes of that, he decided that he'd rather just get married and join the Marines. And and that's yeah, that's what he's done. He's 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 an incredible Marine, and that's definitely his path. I shouldn't have tried to influence him any other way, but about the first marriage thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to yeah. hear this. No, oh, you know what? Wait a sec. I, I, Albert Albert took the time to structure a question. So right. yeah, get back on track. Come, Come on, on. Track. Let me get back to your. Don't your, take the bait, Jeff. Don't take the situation. Bait. Get back on yeah. track. No kidding. Yeah, the fisherman in the group here telling us all about <laughs> the bait. Anyhow, um, so I don't know what I did between the time I, you know what it was, you guys graduated to the next yeah. uh, level, right? You and became Elder Scorn president. I ended up, yeah, I think so. Oh, I was- Well, so team. so we, so our group graduated in 95 from high school. And then we kind of graduated up to Elder Scorn and that's when you were called. Because we were pretty, we were pretty pissed off about it. Yeah. Because we knew it was going to get fun. Yeah. And it, it wasn't was that in, much fun. I was in the presidency. You guys remember Scott Jensen- he was the Elder Scorn president. Oh, yeah. Now, Brother I'm, Scott. I'm not making jokes about Scott Brother Jensen. Scott. I didn't say Scott Jensen to get a laugh out of anybody. Home teaching. Yeah, but you you, you just didn't teaching. say it right. It's, bro, it's Brother Scott. Well, whatever. <laughs> I served as his counselor for a while, and then they called me out of that uh, to be the young men's president. That's how that's that. Right. I do remember that. And it, it was my first decent response. I mean, decent. Everything's, you got to be responsible in everything that you but that was that I just thought it was like I had no well, first of all, it, it it was brought up to me that they wanted to revive scouts, boy scouts. <laughs> and everyone here understands how I feel about that. So I'm not gonna we'll leave that for another podcast, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, to me, that's about. a subject I want to touch on later because I, well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll I hear you I hear you've changed. In we'll put a pin in that. I hear you have a closet full of shorts. We'll no, circle back on that one. I have yet, I have yet to wear a ball dragger to anything that, that <laughs> resemble the camp out jamboree, campery, or anything that said re. <laughs> yeah. No, but it was it was made clear, and I thought I thought, wow, I got some strong feelings uh, against that. But um, I went and met with Dan Ord, who was the young men's president, and I don't know what y'all did to him. But he had, uh, it was interesting. You sit down with someone and they usually typically say, oh, you're going to love this. Oh, it'll be the experience of a lifetime. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. I sat in his suburban in his driveway and he said, this is really going to suck. You're going to hate this. <laughs> and I said, really? He says, oh, you're going to hate these guys. You're going to hate these guys. These guys are awful. And I was kind of expecting a bit of a punchline, like, like you know, da -da -da -da. no, they're great. They're great. <laughs> no, he didn't lit up. Um, he told me about, how you how disrespectful it was and this and that and his counselor was Don right Don was in there oh yeah yes. so I told him that uh, that who called me I think it was McKendrick called me yeah Robert it McKendrick was yeah. yeah and uh, he told me that he suggested that I keep Don I didn't know Don from Adam at that point and he said uh, he said Don Don will help you Don Don's Don's good and I think. I think Bishop McKendrick had a good point, and he, I think he was inspired there because we all know how well that went. I, I went from Don, Dan Ord's house to meet Don Drink, and I told Don Drink, I said, I think I may have made a huge mistake. I said, yeah, are these guys really that bad? And he said, no, no, I don't know. And once again, I didn't know how you guys had treated Don or what you guys had going there, but Don is the kind of genuine a uh, heartfelt person that uh, he's accepting of everyone. He always told me, he said, look, you've got, a, you've got an athlete, you've got a video guy, you've got, uh, I, I don't want to say anything about husband right now. He's a lovely person and all, but the characterization there was very vivid. Um, and you, you've got all these different personalities and different talents and they all, have each other's back. 
That's what he said. He said, that's what I like about these guys. And if you let me guide you through getting to know them, they will, they will trust you if you're genuine. And the one thing he said is these guys can smell a liar from a mile away. They'll know if you're phony and, and you will have the same miserable experience Dan Ord had. And I said, well, okay. And on, on faith, I really took it on faith and, and it, uh, it turned into what it turned into. You know, I think, I think it was one of the best. I mean, I've served in many different positions. I've been young men's president <clears throat> at least two other times, maybe three. I don't remember. But um, I've never had such success in my life and in my heart and learn to grow to love guys that, you know, it's that, like Derek said, it's that, it's that man, boy, you know. <laughs> are, you, are you admitting something now? <laughs> Let's just make it clear. I'll tear your motives. Inappropriate. Is that why you hired us all? I was not you? molested by Jeff Haskins. <laughs> No, no, you know what? It it really it really was something. You guys became like my best friends. And I loved working with you uh, in and out of the church, whether it was on concrete sites or in um, service projects, moving people. Oh, man. Uh, while we were the Temple City Ward moving company. Jeez. Um, but any of those things was always easier because you guys always had your back, your own backs, and we supported each other. Um, I just thought it was great to be able to grow with you, all of you guys together. And then whenever we were asked to do something, uh, we all just did it. And I think we had fun. We figured out a way to have fun doing it and a good time. I got a story, Jeff. Uh, so my one of my first memories of you, uh, it was like the first time I got in the dually. I think it was a Wednesday night activity. <laughs> the dually. And... Uh, <clears throat> I think you offered to take us to 7-Eleven to get us drinks, which was awesome. We're like, wow. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we're pulling out of the church parking lot, making a left turn there out of the stake center. And we almost got hit. You had to floor it and you dropped an O, you know, S-H-I-T, Albert, in case kids are around. <laughs> like, I remember you dropped that. And I remember looking over. I don't remember who was next to me in the truck at the time, but I remember like you were like, oh, uh, what? Hey, guys, sometimes, you know, I'm an adult, make a mistake. It's OK. And I remember, you know, we talked about that after, like and he swore in front of us like this guy is normal. And, and, and you didn't pretend, you know, to cover it up. And like that was a pivotal moment for me, at least that like, all right, this guy, like he kind of we don't have to pretend around him and he won't Never judge us. Funny. Like if we if we accidentally swear and get caught, he's gonna probably tell us we can't do that. But you're not gonna, you know, discipline us. And yeah, for me that was that's one of my first memories of you. That just I thought, all right, I think I think we're gonna like this guy. I, I, I think remember my I, first, one of my first memories of you was watching you at a uh, youth conference stand up and say <laughs> your, your your team's motto was "Save a Beaver." <laughs> Eat a beaver. <laughs> If it's a tree, tree. <laughs> and I and I, Stand I, by. I had the same impression. And I, oh, yeah. But to be fair, none of us knew what that phrase meant. So. I, was, I was pretty. I was pretty ignorant. <laughs> yeah, he had some memories of a girl jumping and saying, "Yeah, yeah, save a tree, eat a beaver." <laughs> I remember people like, "Do you know what you're doing?" I'm like, "Yeah, like what? It's yeah, a, yeah. it's a seminary joke." <laughs> like it's a seminary joke. <laughs> it, it's it was in Ephesians. It's in Ephesians somewhere. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I think I think Jeff was the first leader we ever had that didn't talk down to us, that treated us like a friend. It didn't treat us like we were some project uh, outside of Don. Don was the other guy. But I mean, from being like a president, I think you were the first one that you just kind of came in and said, guys, we're friends and we're going to have fun together. You never talked down to us. You never treated us like we were less than anyone else in the ward. I mean, you talked to us the same way you talked to the bishop. <laughs> and that was fun to see, you know, Yeah. because we had never experienced that before. Yeah, I, and I think Don was right. We had a lot of leaders that would tell us things that we knew were never going to happen. Yeah, and we held it against them. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying we're holding a grudge, but we still joke about some of those old leaders. Oh yeah, I mean, for for years, those were the guys' houses that we teepeed and <laughs> you know put toilets on, and 
things like that. That that was the extent of our badness. Mm. Yeah, we TP'd you. Yeah, well, that's not that's not all that bad in in you know looking at what's going on today. But um, I think that having Dawn around honestly gave me the courage <laughs> to um, to just make those first few moves, just to get involved, get my feet wet, and uh, try to set a good example because I I have a testimony and I wanted to make sure that you guys at least learn to feel of that and feel the spirit. That's the that's the whole key to the whole thing, isn't it? To learn to feel the spirit. I don't care if you guys get a citizenship in the nation merit badge. I I could give a darn. You know, I, it was all about learning the the basics, protecting yourself, um, and and keeping yourselves real and and true to yourselves. I think everyone here had had excellent parents, and I just wanted to <laughs> support them too. Um, I thought that was very important. And I, I think I gained the support and the um, the help, or what, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, just the support of all your folks. When it I, think you, I think you gained their trust. Yeah. At least with our parents, for sure. Yeah, yeah, which is a testimony that you guys never told them about the driving or the, the racing up, uh, in that dually racing up to oh, um, not those- not until not until like post mission when it didn't matter it was too late <laughs> yeah that was fun or the I was, that makes me think of the old beavis and butthead tape that was like the first trip uh to lake arrowhead <laughs> i think and yeah. i wasn't in the truck we were yeah. tad the older guys were in the truck yeah. and they're like this is at the first stop to get drinks and dinner you guys got out like so cool we're listening to this beavis and butthead tape once again it's not necessarily church appropriate and he's letting us listen to it and uh, we we're like what well don started doing it too in his car he had a tape also after that speaking of that that makes me laugh too because i remember this is the time when uh, comedy cds yeah don we'd listen to the adam sandler <laughs> cd in the car which you know yeah, pretty pretty funny. Put a couple yeah. swear words in it. Don and I both, and Dean Bolander too. You know, I mean, I, I got to give him a lot of props because he was kind of the guy that was like our <laughs> our protocol manager. He he kind of kept everything. When Don and I and Dean would have a meeting to plan things, we actually did meet once in a while. Um, he was always the one that said, "Okay, you guys can get away with this if you maybe." Uh, do more um, shut-in sacrament services. You know what I mean? Remember that when we go <laughs> yep. on, like once a month and do that. Yeah. Says, maybe maybe if you, you know you got to give the bishopric something that makes them think that you're on the straight and narrow here and that you're <laughs> doing the, the work. And Dean, that that was Dean. That was Dean. He kept us from getting kicked out of <laughs> kicked out of our conference <laughs> in a, in a couple times and. Uh, he saved our bacon too up up in um, Lake Arrowhead a couple of times. Really, and, uh, I don't know if you remember the last time we went up there. I we got up there early and we went to the girls' cabin and took all the TVs. Out. Oh, I, I, I remember like remember it was that. yesterday. I do remember that. <laughs> like it was all yesterday. The TVs, and then and then the the night I think Saturday night or the night before we left, <laughs> Dean said said um, the girls are complaining. They, they, they know you took the TVs. <laughs> I said, really? Who told them? He said, I don't know, but I'm just telling you that they're they're threatening to tell the bishop. And I said, okay, well, um, I'll tell you what, we're going to have a testimony. We're going to have a fireside. And we went around their back door while they were having, because it was at their cabin. And I put the TVs all in a closet and closed it up. And then uh, when we were confronted with it, I went to the closet and opened it and said, well, here's your TVs. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. They probably, I'm so they, good. Yeah, the, that was so Dean. Good. You know, Dean Dean Bolander was a was a great friend also because I think he saw that we were all kind of congealing as a group. And uh, I know that's a big word, Derek. That means to come together. And, you know, <laughs> oh, uh, congeal. Yeah. I'll, I'll put foot footnotes. Congeale. Is that congeale? Right? Congeale. <laughs> that's like fragile. Yeah. It's like fragile. <laughs> But I remember he took the dean took the deacons a lot. Yeah, that the older guys could do stuff. Yep. I mean, at dean's credit, I've talked to a lot of those guys. They love him to this day. Yeah. Yeah. They they really love dean. Yeah. So he did a great he did a great job with that younger group. He did. Yeah. Yep. 
he was an engineer. He was a mechanic. And I think any guy that, um, you know, isn't too, is, is more of a, I don't know how to describe it. It's like me, just kind of blue collar, just work and build stuff and do stuff with your, with your hand. I think you relate better to, to young adults, to young kids and whatever. I keep digging myself a bigger hole for dinner. Uh, so we really need to get you registered. <laughs> right, there we go. There we go. The sake of your neighbors. You know, <laughs> 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 Oh my gosh! But uh, going not- going back to the 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 TV situation, I wanted to make something kind of clear so the listeners are aware. Uh, <laughs> maybe just to justify it too. I mean, we needed the better TVs because we were <laughs> playing uh, the Nintendo sixty four uh, WCW versus yeah. NWO. Heck and yeah! Like the TVs we had, they just weren't working. The component connections, it was just like frustrating. So and it didn't did- seem like it was that big well, of a deal. I remember right? that night. Bishop McKendrick like stormed down the stairs and like yelled. At us. Do you remember what he said? We we're oh, watching Star Wars. Remember uh, Re- Return of the Jedi. Well, Return about, of the Jedi is about Leia, right? And Leia, yeah, yeah. In yeah. The bikini. yeah in the bikini. Leia. <laughs> we we were we were all doing like the woo. <laughs> and <laughs> he came. He, he came out. Be ashamed man. of ourselves or something like I yep. don't know. Yeah, pretty, uh, yeah. ashamed of yourself. And if you're not ashamed, you should be even more ashamed. <laughs> I, I think, I think, I think he was really talking to Tad and Fernando. Yeah, <laughs> no, but you know, but you know what the, you know what the funniest thing of that whole situation was was he goes in the room and slams the door. And if you remember, the deacons were upstairs in that loft in their <laughs> in their sleeping bags trying to go to sleep, and it's just dead quiet. Everyone's like, "What do we do?" And then all of a sudden you hear Don say, Don. hey, Brett get, Brett, get your hand out of my sleeping bag. <laughs> <laughs> and we all started laughing. We lost and we went it. Right back to having fun. Wow. We were like, okay, Don, Don says we can have fun. We can Don, have fun. Don came <laughs> oh to the rescue God, there. Dude. Don drink. Don drinks, man. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. That yeah. was a good trip. Yeah, it was. Those, those were good. Those were good days. Yeah. The last... The last good roundup I ever had, and the last time they ever asked me to be young men's president, I took a group of kids to this BLM property. That's called the Bureau of Land Management, where yeah, if you drive out far enough, matter. they don't care what you throw, huh? What? Oh, man. That no, the Black Lives Matter thing. No, 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 no. But, yeah. <laughs> I hey, what's wrong with that, Jess? Whoa. And, whoa, and, whoa, and, whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Whoa. Take it easy. <laughs> No, no, no. I took them to the Bureau of Land Management. If you drive out far enough toward um, Bakersfield, you can do anything you want out there. You can shoot off automatic weapons. You can blow up bombs. And I thought, oh, cool. And I had a counselor at the time who was a real nutball. He was he was certified. He was something else. We took these old 20-gallon propane tanks, filled them up about halfway. Apparently, you don't want to fill them up all the way. They won't ignite. And we took them out. <laughs> Took everyone out and at night and we set them up on a hill and we shot them with a 308 hunting rifle nice. from about 40 feet away. <laughs> 40 feet. That's pretty close. That's a little dangerous. The stupid thing. Well, well, first of all, we had to get a bonfire going and you set the propane tank in the bonfire because the propane tank won't blow up if you shoot it. It won't. Right. It needs, it needs to, the gas needs to escape and then it, then it blows up. And this son of a gun went spiraling up into the atmosphere. I don't know how high. And our scoutmaster at the time, and I say that tongue in cheek. Anyhow, he's got this hunting rifle and he's shooting the darn thing up in the air. (laughs) Not not realizing there's campers on the other side of the the hill. They're running for cover because there's pieces of shrapnel, this tank going and casings coming down all over the place. And anyhow, yeah, that was the last step. I got released like two weeks later. That was that was the end of that. And then this war um, really went all in on scouting, and that was fine. That's I don't I don't besmirch anyone. Like the slights, for instance, I think they did a, a superb job with the guys that were interested in scouting in Temple City War. Um, you know, I, I I wouldn't want to take anything from that. Um, they did the same thing here. And uh, they did they did a good job, but that was the end of the young men's program as I used to run it. 
with the propane tanks. And I, I ain't kidding, man. When that when that propane tank was circling up above into the atmosphere and the 308 was going off, and did you start singing the national off. anthem? <laughs> yeah. National lampoons, Chris's vacation. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking of you guys. I was. I was thinking, oh, you know what? Nick would love this. Yeah. Nick would love this. This is a this is a scene right out of of. Derek's dream. This would be a perfect, uh, perfect camp out. God it? bless America. So if we ever get together and we have time to go out to the BLM land, I've got all kinds of propane tanks sitting <laughs> well, in the back of my <laughs> East Texas. You know, I, I had to I had to take them out of the van for one reason or another. So um yeah. They're, they're oh, you still have the child molester van? Mm-hmm. Is that what you're saying? No, I just told you I got rid of it. I know I promised it to you when I was done with it, but you had to burn all the evidence. Come on. <laughs> you know, this isn't going this isn't going anywhere. Here. Uh, Albert, you need to you need to take control here for crying out loud. It's the bottom of Lake Pudding Stone right now. <laughs> okay, well well one thing I would say going back to what we were talking mm. about earlier, yes, Glenn Slight, I think, was a, a good scout master and it was fun to actually spend time with uh, those who wanted to participate, you know, so David, the slight boys, mm-hmm. Brett, Danny. Uh, but as you, as we mentioned before, like the citizenship badges, all those other like schoolwork, high school work badges, like they weren't of interest to me, but, but it was fun to actually participate in uh, camping trips. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that was just, you know, he took a lot of time and effort and when we can see more as adults now, how much time and effort the leaders have to put in. Right. Uh, so that, that, that was more evident to me now what you and Don had to do in order to make the program so successful for us because we can look at it today. I mean, the youth program is not nearly as cool as it used to be. At least it's, I don't different. Think it's different, isn't it? I, it, it almost seems to me because my, my oldest grandson is um, a deacon mm-hmm. and uh, it, I, I think to myself, wow, there's just nothing really all that well planned out here. Um, hmm. Whether, whether it was scouts that held things together or at least gave us something to kick against or what? I don't. We were know. definitely united in that. How much we dislike scouts, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you yeah. know, I give I give McKendrick a lot of credit though too. Yeah, because he gave you he gave you a lot of leash. Yeah. I think I think he saw that we were changing. I mean, it might have been slow, and it might not might not have been as much as he wanted. But mm. I I think I mean he let you and Don kind of just run with almost yeah. anything. Yeah, and yeah. I mean even talking to him today because I run into him. I've never heard him say a negative thing about the things that were going on back then. Yeah. And he actually apologized for that whole situation. He, he was like half asleep and he heard something he thought was inappropriate. Well, and, and, and he had like a sick kid with him and stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, yeah. I, we understand. I, I, well, as that's an adult, cool. I probably don't fault the 40 more. It was just, funny. But, yeah. you know, he brought up a good point. Uh, I think he was talking to me and Dayton Weston one time. And he says, you know, I was 34 years old when I was called to be the bishop. That's yeah. crazy. You know, and he goes, I, I just, I had no idea what I was doing. And I think at the time we were like 36, 37. He goes, could yeah. you imagine being the bishop right now? Mm-hmm. I think for me, that kind of changed the way I looked at everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he cared. I think at the end of the day, I think we knew he, he actually did care about us in spite mm-hmm. of some of the things he did. Yeah. We knew he cared. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think so too. And I, I think he cares to this day because he'll, whenever I'm together with him and we're not dealing with some weird issue uh, that always comes up. And, and here's the key to the whole thing. Like I said about, about uh, Brother Bolander, about Dean, um, whenever they asked us to do something, we did it. We did it. If it was um, participating in a, a state social a dance, helping someone load up their truck, a service project, we always did it. And, and every one of you showed up and, you know, thank goodness Slurpees weren't that expensive because I don't think you would have if I hadn't, Promise Slurpees afterwards. Ah, it wasn't just that, Jeff. Come on. I mean, yeah. it hit a point where the plan was always like, we're going to go do the church activity. Yeah. And then we're going to BJ's. A couple yeah. of us would jump in the Mustang or Moby. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, we always went and made the appearance. But then we also went and had our own fun. Yeah. And we do anything bad. We literally went. And I think I think everything we did when we were together was fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, yeah. it didn't really matter what we were doing. As soon as the group got together, it was just laughing the whole time, making fun of somebody, and just life was good when we were together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, thinking about that as like a, a brotherhood and a family, I think about how like you didn't, no matter how much you didn't want to do it, you didn't want to like leave one of your boys hanging. 
You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a yeah. code. And I remember when I was working a lot with you, Jeff, like it'd be a long freaking day and I'm like tired as heck and just want to go home and you'd get a call and you'd have to go help someone do something. And I just move. I couldn't imagine the thought of you dropping me off at home and you going and doing it alone, you know, like, especially because yeah. I've been with you all day and we're both tired. And so it's kind of the same thing. Like, man, I can't let Albert or Nick or Tad do this without me you know we all got to show up and help each other that was a cool bond you know it was it was it it actually was more about not leaving my brothers hanging than actually doing the service for whoever that random person was you know yeah yeah one of the things i didn't mention when uh bishop mckendrick called me the one person he talked about there were two people one was this kid named josh i can't think of his last name josh fisher fisher yeah he was concerned about proclivities and such there, but he was also concerned about David and not that David was going to do anything to harm himself or anyone else, but that he wasn't going to be like included. He was worried about that. I don't know where that came from. I think it wasn't very long. Uh, it, not a lot of time had transpired since they had moved into the ward. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, sure. Just to cut you off real quick, and I'll let you go with that, but, you know, Albert, Nick, uh, Tad, and I, we've all known each other since memory, yeah. diapers, yeah. and stuff. so David was a new move-in yeah. relative to all of us who've known each other our whole lives, for sure. Right, right. And, and, and those older guys, yeah, Ted, the, older the older guys, guys, my age group picked on him a lot. Yeah, yeah, so that was brought up, and um, <clears throat> that's something I talked to, I didn't talk to Dan Ord about it, because that, that, that blew my mind, but I talked to Don about it, and Don said um, uh, that we should talk to Dean and and talk it out. You know, he didn't. In other words, he didn't just like sweep it under the rug, like oh, it'll be okay. But we talked about it, and what we settled on was uh, we were going to wait and see how things transpired and worked out. And I'll tell you something about you boys. You guys had his back. You made him the man he is today, just as much as anyone else did you know you know because you supported him you you gave him um validity and worth and showed him that he was part of your gang you got like i said you got um derek dupre going to high school with david weston and i can't imagine a scenario where derek would not have helped him out if he needed it um <clears throat> that uh that that's to you guys tribute you guys i i bring that up Every time I have a group of uh, people that I'm talking to, um, I always bring that up, that that's necessary in school. You you go to seminary, you walk across the street to school together. Uh, don't abandon each other under any circumstances. Doesn't matter, don't leave someone behind. These are these are members <laughs> of the family. And uh, you guys took really good care of him. I tell you, we, we had fun with him, but <laughs> we had fun with all of us. All all right. of us yeah. Every one of us got it. No one was safe. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I actually have a story about David I wanted to share. That's a, a pretty cool story. It's a funny story. Nick knows the story very well. So this was uh, in 2006. Uh, Nick and I had tickets to go see Aerosmith mm-hmm. in concert. So obviously because of you, Jeff, and the music trips that we would always have and the music soundtrack, Aerosmith was really popular for us. It was one of the rare times we were actually going to go see him. So Nick and I are in my old uh, Ford Contour, which blew an engine hose. So on our way to the Honda Center in Anaheim, <laughs> we had to pull over. We're, we're tracked. We're stuck. We call David and just like how Derek talked about not leaving a brother hanging. I mean, David dropped everything, brought one of his kids with him to come to fix my car, which was like, you know, really touching to me. Really cool that he would go to that effort. So so Nick and I can make it to the concert. And what was kind of funny is that in order to fix the engine holes, he had to use a special lubricant to kind of like really push it in. <laughs> Nick knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Watch Derek. Look at Derek's face. We all do. <laughs> and it's just to finish the picture for those, I mean, those who aren't aware, in 2006, David had just gotten married to Ali, so, you know, he's a married man now, so he has access to certain... Uh... <laughs> But I I, I'm we, always grateful for David for, you know, s- stepping up and helping us. So, like, we talked about, you know, us having his back. He had ours as well. So, yeah. so David, I mean, may have been the best of all of us, to be honest. Yeah. I couldn't, point, imagine, I couldn't imagine Dave not being a part of all the stories mm-hmm. at this point yeah. in my life. I look back and we would have been missing something without Dave. Yeah, we wouldn't be who we are. Yeah. You know, regardless, you know, it, uh, I attended one of his sons uh, or... I think one of his sons just got baptized. They moved out here to Lancaster. 
which yeah. um, isn't terribly far from where we're living. It was about 45 minutes or something. Um, and I was very happy that he called and asked if I'd go. Um, and we went. And I got to tell you, that that is a, a really tremendous father. You know, he's he's really stepped up and he's raising all, he's got all those kids. They've got a really nice house uh, there at um, in Lancaster. It's a nice part of Lancaster. I can't think of the name of it. It's like Glass Park or something like that. It's nice. Wait, there there's is. a nice part of Lancaster? There is. There is. Okay. Yeah, it's up against it's up against like Lake Elizabeth. You know, it's not Lancaster um to the east of the 14 freeway. It's Lancaster to oh, why am I telling you you live in Keller? <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like you're gonna go home shopping this weekend. I think I'll take the missus for a drive to uh, Lancaster. Yeah, no. The uh some of the best memories. Yeah, it's very nice. It's very it's very nice to see the whole the whole situation. Is working with uh, you, Jeff, and uh, Nick, and David on the Coombies. Coombies. Uh. I, the, the one memory I have is like we're, we're pretty much done with the job and watching Dave pee off the rooftop of the Coombies. <laughs> <laughs> <their fucking tree. laughs> And then, and then he ended up like living like on that like yeah. their baby yes, yes. I'm like they didn't know how much he peed off their roof like that's hilarious. You you remember he was so frightened to do it. I said just pee off the roof. Don't do it. Do it. Just do it. Do it. No one's there. Do it. And he finally got that stream going. And I said Jocelyn's coming. <laughs> <laughs> retreat. Retreat. And he starts sprinkling all that. <laughs> You can't pinch it off with you. <laughs> well, he sure couldn't. Uh, <laughs> remember when he uh, he couldn't get the nail in? Oh, it was it Kubi's dad? Was it Bart? Yeah. Uh, like Bart? I don't know. Yeah. Bart Kubi, like I don't know what good Dave's cussing at the nail yeah. hammer. He can't get it. <laughs> Just, like throws a hammer yeah. uh, and Bart, I don't know what kind of good it does to beat the crap out of an inanimate object. Yeah. <laughs> that boy ain't right. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. Later, later on, Bart told me he said, "You know, they they tell they tell me that my grandson's not right, but that <laughs> husband boy, yeah, that's that's not right. <laughs> that's how he used to speak." <laughs> I, I, and then you could not understand how Jeff Coomby was the son of Barth Coomby. <laughs> you were complete opposites. Man. You remember how he joined got... the, the Idaho Baker potato? Oh. It's an Idaho Baker. That's not a baked potato. They took me to a restaurant, and this baked potato was the size of my shoe. That's not a baker. That's not an Idaho Baker. Proper Idaho Baker is an inch and a half wide. <laughs> two inches wide three and a half inches long that's an idaho baker <laughs> like it was like i was hanging on every word saying, i've got to remember this <laughs> you're gonna get quizzed later on I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought i thought jeff was the the phd of the family but he, he knew those you know what you could not tell that guy that that was not an idaho baker <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. I told him I, I produced a, a piece of paper. He had parked his uh, trailer in the front on the driveway. And yeah. I don't know if you guys remember, he was constantly fighting with the city of Temple City over the permits yeah. and all this, all this stuff. And so I made up a fake violation uh, thing and put it on his trailer. <laughs> the, the, the city of Temple City wanted him to move the damn trailer out <laughs> or he was going to start having to pay like $300 a night. <laughs> Oh, oh, so much fun. God. Those were good days. Those were good times. Dude, one of my favorite memories of you messing with someone was was not long after Fernando and I got home from our missions. When you called you called us up on a Saturday, said, Hey, I'm gonna go down to what was it, Newport, we're gonna go to Paisano's. Oh, you know, I'll pick you guys up. One, it was just a ton of fun, like yeah. going down in the old station wagon. And Fernando was gonna be late. So <laughs> he's like, I'll meet you down there. And I remember we go down and we eat, and he's still not there. So <laughs> yeah. you're like, let's head over to the boardwalk. Yeah. So we leave. Fernando finally shows up, and he, he finds us. He goes, what happened? I thought we were going to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And then you told him. You said, yeah, you know, this, uh, I dared Nick to get up on the table and do a strip dance. Yeah. He, he's like, and that son of a gun got up there and started, got down all the way to his underwear before they kicked <laughs> us out. 
<laughs> for so Fernando about five years ago calls me and goes, dude, Jeff made that story up. <laughs> I said, yeah, that was that wasn't real. Dude, apparently he told all kinds of people that story. He's like, it's one of my favorite stories of my lifetime. And Jeff made the whole thing up. Oh, my uh, God. One like of the, I look like an idiot. We, we all get bad raps because of Jeff's made up stories. People believe. <laughs> we took off. You remember the ride home where he kept trying to get away from us, but that station wagon was so quick that he couldn't get away from it. We had, we had all of you in the station wagon. And I think Nick and Derek were both pressing ham up against the back. Yeah. Of the I believe so. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't get away from it. <laughs> Dude, and then Jeff would always tell my dad that I didn't want to work. <laughs> yeah, I'd right. get my ass chewed out. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you said we had no work. Well, your dad, your dad used to call and make sure that you were working. He, he, your dad, your dad had a work ethic. He wanted all of his kids to work, and I would, I would tell him, I'd say, even after you work, uh, we'd do like sixteen-hour days. I'd, I'd call him up and I'd say, you know what? I don't know what happened to Derek. I went to pick him up today, and he wasn't, he wasn't there. <laughs> so, oh so I remember, I remember I was your secretary in the elders quorum for a little while, and I remember we had a meeting before church, and uh, somehow it, something came up, and and Gaston goes, "Yeah, so did how how was Derek at work today, or 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 the other day?" And you're like, "Oh, he didn't tell you? Yeah, I I I came to pick him up in the morning. I honked his horn, my horn. He never came out, so I left. He didn't, dude. I remember Derek showed up right after we got." out of that meeting and do gaston was like going like, off of it <laughs> and you were like yeah you're like dude i worked a full day and he would not <laughs> what believe are you talking you. about <laughs> he would not believe you because jeff had just told him in that meeting you didn't go to work that week i think it was like the whole week he said you took off you remember in in one of those meetings you remember danny martin del campo the, the yeah. Yeah. Of counselors and uh, I told him that he had to get married I said the state president told me that you need to get married and if you don't pick a mate he's going to assign you one and he's got one of two girls in mind and one they were both you know that that one girl that's, that's still got like a third eye going and, and then another one oh. I can't think of I don't want to say their names because I'm sure they're beautiful human beings <clears throat> but neither of them and that dude went out and found a girlfriend like that week. <laughs> he was married by a month he was married and afterwards I, I met his reception i said you know i was joking right and he looked at me you were joking <laughs> said, yeah i was joking and he looks over and goes oh <laughs> sorry buddy you know oh, yeah, make a joke that was probably his first wife too. <laughs> well, it's nice to see that your your pranks were working on everybody, not just us. We weren't the oh. available ones, right? <laughs> oh, I still I still get one off once in a while. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. Oh my gosh. No. Yeah, yeah you, you guys were the best. I don't know what to say. Well, you guys were too. You and Don were just great. In fact, I mean, you kept us all employed. I mean, yes, I, I never pumped concrete with you because, again, as Derek described, it just seemed like really hard and difficult. But if you weren't pumping concrete with you, you were uh, delivering lightning pictures with Don. So it was actually really cool that yeah. our, our leaders were giving us, you know, time to hang out with them and earn some money. So we had money to play with. And I guess teaching us the uh, good work ethics, too, along the way. So so are we, and we're, it, and for both you and Don for that. And Don, and Don knew where every high school was on every route that we took. <laughs> Don did? <laughs> oh, I told like you three o'clock, three o'clock would come around and he'd be like, we got to go for a drive. <laughs> and he knew where every high school was. I swear, man, you guys, you guys didn't have a chance, did you? No. Uh, well, well, we had, we had, we had a really good time and, and I, I know it was a, a complete effort. It wasn't just us. It wasn't just you. It was us. It was all of us. You know, we <clears throat> we seem to have cracked the code for a while there, didn't we? Mm -hmm. um, I think we all got through it uh, pretty well. And if you guys can remember anything about that, um, I was I was relatively happy that all of you served missions. That that was important because regardless of where you're at or what you're doing today. 
you have that experience and I know that you've had the spirit in you and been able to testify and relay that and and change people's lives, whether that life was yours or theirs or whatever. That that was something that that I think was very important. And I, I'm glad that you all had that experience. Um, Try to remember that. Remember that and instill that in your kids. You know, I I just had a a young lady um, who was a part of a Sunday school class that I was teaching, um, single young adult type Sunday school class. And uh, she um, shacked up, I don't know how to say it nowadays. She, she moved in with a guy and they had several kids and they, um, they were doing okay. She was happy, but she always had that kind of a lacking situation where she wished that her husband, because now that her kids were in primary age and stuff, she wanted to bring them to church. And it's difficult. Part, you know, part mm -hmm. of the situation is just difficult. And uh, and she told me, uh, we were sitting in the foyer about a year ago, and she said, you know, it, it's it's been tough, but I always remember what you told me, that there's, there's no <laughs> such thing as a patriarch of a home that is not the patriarch of a home, regardless of what denomination he may be, a uh, Christ, uh, judo Christiano, um, I don't know how to say it in English, um, home has a patriarch, and he should lead you in family prayer every night, regardless. And he said, he said, Brother Hessels, we've been doing that, and he joined the church a few months ago, and I just, I just found out um, he, he is the son-in-law now of our current bishop. And our bishop got called last week. He was being baptized. He flew back to Oklahoma and was baptized. And I'm just sharing that experience because it's it's not so much important of where you're worshiping. The most important place is in your home. The most important place is in your home, no matter where you're at in life, on the scale of activity in this church, in that church, I'm just telling you, be the patriarch in your home and teach your children to pray, teach your children to feel the spirit. And they will, and they will never, I'm not going to say they'll never make the wrong decision, but they'll always find their way back. That's, that's, I think that would be the most important thing I could tell you guys that I've learned since I've, since we've spent those nights um, mooning Fernando out the back window of <laughs> 1976 Ford LTD wagon. <laughs> yeah. um and I'm, I'm proud of, of all of you guys for the for those um for those steps that we took for the work that we did together and um that's all yeah i'm really really happy to be part of this group well i know i could say that i i used uh i've I think i've helped other people go on missions and kind of use the tactics i learned from you and don uh after my mission to help guys you know get on a mission also so the knowledge has hopefully been passed down that's good you've done no, you've done well Pat Vaughn. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be at some random place and uh this 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 young man or you know a guy in his 20s will come up to me and give me a big bear hug and I'm like, how are you doing you know and they'll uh and some of the person will like how do you know that person I'm like I was his young men's president. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they're like, what? What are you talking about? I'm like, I'll tell you later. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's uh, a whole thing. <laughs> but uh yeah, it's there's something special about, you know, helping the next generation. And then I like you're saying, just it's all about family and being a patriarch to your children and and just it's all about family, you know. Yeah, that's what that's what we are. You know, that's why we all come from the same neighborhood, from the same ward, from the same <laughs> We're, we're family more than anything you know we're yeah uh, yeah that's great that's right that's right every one of your families the the pinedas the turners the duprays you guys and you know you you all had that um i don't want to say drilled into you but it was just instilled into you from your families um and i really appreciate the fact that right off the bat all your parents gave me the support and the uh the latitude, most of them. There's only one parent that didn't didn't want me keeping their kid out too late. But um, you know what? But Lee Millsaps, uh, and whether you guys know this or not, Lee Millsaps would constantly give me twenty dollar bills because he knew that I was spending money on gas and food and stuff. And uh, 
it wouldn't matter. I could I could have taken um, I could have taken Brett down to Tijuana and showed him the Donkey Show, and I think. <laughs> Didn't we do that one time? <laughs> I, didn't, I, did not, I told you not to bring that up. <clears throat> you brought it up. You brought it up. The, the band's gone, man. <clears throat> Just let it go. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I know my mom told me later in life, Jeff, well, after like post mission, like, oh, yeah, you know, my mom was smart enough to realize just for me, like, she understood that if I told her something, I probably would ignore it because she's my parent. And she's like, oh, yeah, I used to go to Jeff all the time and just say, hey, you know, Nick's doing this. And that was it. And you would just be like, I got it. And, and she just understood that if you said the same thing, I'd listen more. Uh, yeah. And it was true. Like, I look back and go, all right, mom, you were very smart to mm -hmm. same words, but just coming from your leader, you know, yeah. you take it differently. And so, yeah, my mom also has told me, you know, how grateful she was that you understood all that and were yeah. willing to just teach us and take that responsibility on so yeah well i remember when your mom was our sunday school teacher she actually brought that same message up to everybody just saying that yes i mean there are certain things that you may not be comfortable telling to your parents but if you have a, a good youth leader that you can trust in and confide in that that could be an inspiration almost like a father or mother-like figure to you and jeff you and don were that way for us so uh, so it was great to see that, uh, to have uh, inspiration and guidance, because yes, it can be kind of awkward, especially in your teenage years to listen to your parents. But even though, you know, they, they want the best for you, it's still great to have uh, great leaders like you and Don. Ooh. Well, that's great. I, I appreciate all you guys. That's, that's pretty cool. And, and just on that note, um, I've always held people's confidences. Um, you know, when, when one of you would come with a situation or need uh, some advice or any type of counsel, um, I've, I've always kept your guys' confidences, even Derek's. And I'm telling you, that wasn't easy. <laughs> that was not easy to this day. There are still things I have to take Ambien to get to sleep. <laughs> if that's what you're telling yourself, all right. <laughs> there was nothing penicillin to clear up. <laughs> and yeah, I'll, I'll go find the van. I know where I left it. <laughs> Modern medicine's a hell of a hell of a good. <laughs> like well, I think there's a I think there's a trust with all of us, truthfully. I mean, I think I, I always felt like my, these are my brothers. Not so much, oh, Jeff's a leader. It was like Jeff, Don, they're like our my brothers. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever felt like you were ever going to dress me down for something or lecture me on something. Yeah, I just always felt like, to Derek's point, when we got together, we were just brothers. We were family. Yeah. I, I think I, I've always felt like I could trust all you guys with just anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't that it wasn't that way before you came about either. Yeah. I mean, my my age group, I would definitely not say that about. Mm. Yeah. I don't remember what who was before Dan Ord or was there someone Don, before Dan Ord? He was, was Don, Don Don Rios, I believe. Yeah. Don oh, Rios. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got gotcha. you. And he was he was he was a good guy, but it was rough with him, too. Mm. He bought a car with our money. I'm kidding. Uh. What? <laughs> That's the, really the old bug. There was a joke. There was a a car wash fundraiser, and like the money disappeared, and then Letitia had a new Volkswagen Bug. So Tad's group, we always joked about how, oh yeah, that was really, that was really our bug. It wasn't. Oh my goodness. We were just well, young and dumb. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Sometimes you hit on nerve, and by nerve I mean the truth. <laughs> 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 You know what, though, Jeff, you were always very truthful with us. It's something I've tried to emulate. Like, I still remember, and, you know, this is all stuff that's very controversial, per se, in the church. And by the way, our mom has come around to your side. Like, I remember that you would tell us, like, hey, you know, people do drugs. Drugs are fun. They, And there was a story behind it, and it was like, hey, it becomes bad. But, like, it is fun. That's why people do it. You just have to realize the consequences later and blah, blah, blah. Um, or it's not blah, blah, blah. But you, yeah. like you told us the reality of life pretty bluntly and then tried to properly explain, hey, you can avoid it. You can be smart. You don't have to fall into those mm -hmm. traps. But you were very blunt and honest with us about just, you know, kind of how life really is. You have to see that stuff uh, in order to 
be effective at trying to keep someone away from drugs, for instance, you have to be honest with them. You really do. If you're not, you're not doing them any favors. And uh, I got, I actually got called. Uh, I don't know who told who, but um, Bishop McKendrick had me in the office uh, at one point and told me not to share those stories with you guys. And I, and I said, okay, well, I said, would you, would you allow me to kind of go by the spirit on that? You know, I mean, there's situations where you got a kid that's, that may be in the back of his mind, a little interested in this. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind. I, I think maybe that was beneficial. I think it, it kind of showed that you don't have to walk down that aisle. I'll tell you what it was all about. And if it was worthwhile, I'll tell you that, you know, that it's worthwhile. If it's good, lovely, or a good report, right? We seek after those things. Um, those things weren't good or lovely. They were they were uh, harmful. And I wanted you guys to know uh, firsthand, not not that I read it out of a handbook and said, oh, look, guys, right here, it says that you shouldn't do that. Right. No, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, hey, look at this. I did that. I was in the <laughs> and, you know, and it, I'll tell you what, I don't remember half of the half of the school year, but that's why you shouldn't do it. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think on, but I think that kind of honesty builds trust. Yeah. Yeah. How could how could you be expected to be trusted if you're if you're just a bald face face liar about stuff? Yeah. Like that? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm not not saying it to brag or to ingrandize myself <laughs> one way or the other. I mean, why would I? I'm just telling you that that. Um, there are, there are things that we can do in life that uh, lead to lasting happiness and uh, joy. And, uh, you know, that's all. That's, that's it. And Don was that way, too. I think Don was yeah, very was. upfront and, yeah. and um, realistic and truthful. That's, that's what made it work. Yeah. Dean, Dean also, you know, Dean was off, awfully, um, he was very genuine. I think that's what made it work. Is that we were we were all very genuine. It's true. Yeah, you guys made it easy. But you know, it's um I think the reason why this is so special, and because you, Don, I I would even put Mike Payne in that. Yeah. That that group of leaders that were just honest and vulnerable, but strong spiritual men and weren't afraid to show their weaknesses to us. Um and that gave us a lot of confidence in life and it kind of made it hard to move away into the quote unquote real world and then into other wards. And you're just like, dude, all these people are just full of crap. Like you totally, you missed like that feeling you had in Temple City Ward. And you're like, well, was that feeling just the feeling of my youth? You know, what was going on? And you're just like, the more time goes on, you're like, no, that was a special group. And those, those, I, I've never seen that kind of leadership ever amongst the ranks of the other wards I moved into and was a leader myself in. And and I would even try to implement the stuff that, that y'all taught me and you would just, again, get the weird looks and like just no one would buy into what you were doing. And it was, it was um, and I'm not trying to talk about the church and the culture. I'm just trying to just talk about how special that was yeah. that we had, you know, and, and yeah. And there's a reason we're all on this call, you know, 20 years later is because it wasn't your generic, you know, um, well, what was the, the Simpsons neighbor? What's that guy? The uh, Flanders. Ned Flanders. <laughs> it wasn't the Flanders young men's leader. You know what I mean? It was, it was, <laughs> I and, and, and it wasn't, and it wasn't just like you taught us things. You put us together. <laughs> You know, you, we were in the streets. We were like working amongst other people, and we saw how you, as a as a faithful, strong, patriarchal man, interacted with some of the scumbags yeah. of the world and in the world. And, and that was just as big of a learning experience than you know being in the classroom at the ward building. You know, and so I, I thank you for that because because I, I still you know bring that stuff up to this day to other people I'm trying to mentor. So. Yeah, that was probably just as big as any 7-Eleven run. It was seeing you, Don, Mike Payne interact as professionals in the professional world as a, yeah. as a good, faithful man. You know, that was invaluable, which yeah. 
which you feel bad that people don't, you know, a lot of most 99.9% of the young men out there in the, you know, war situation don't get that opportunity. And so uh, thank you for that. I really do. Oh. oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, you guys made it very worthwhile. That's for sure. I'll tell one more quick story. Oh, go for it. And I think the statute of limitations have expired, like the other story I told you. <laughs> I can't when wait I was, to hear this one. When I, when we moved up here, um, two weeks two weeks after we moved up here, I was in a bishopric, and we had to take a group of kids. The church had purchased a, a scout camp, an old. It actually had been restored into a nudist camp, but the church bought it up in uh, Running Springs, I think it's called, up in uh, Arrowhead, between Arrowhead and Big Bend, called Camp Camp Hinkley. And we were having a youth conference up there. And uh, I don't know if you guys remember, I don't think, uh, well, some of you might remember the Toyota pickup I had. It's a four, four-wheel drive, yeah. extra cab. Yeah. I know you do. I, I, I drove that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I took Eric and um, Josh to lunch in it one time. Yeah, I used I to drive it up. Home. I drive it home sometimes Yeah, when I was yeah, working with you. Five-speed, four, four bangers. Yeah. Um, so I loaded up 13 kids in that thing. Um, they were all in the back, and there was like five in the cab, and the bishop. The bishop was riding shotgun. And he, he he just kept shaking my head saying, Brother Haskins, I don't know if this is going to fly. I don't know if it's going to fly. I says, oh, we're going to fly. <laughs> we'll be fine. We'll be the first ones up there. We got 13 <laughs> of these kids. We got our whole ward. Uh, we got, we got, yeah, we took off and we split. And like half of the kids puked in the back because I was taking the twisties and stuff. And I and I said, I, I told the bishop the whole time, I said, trust me, man, they're going to like this. They're going to enjoy this. <laughs> and we get there, open up the camper cell, and you can see just smell this human effluence that's everything. <laughs> and there's there's a girl with a head wound and, and <laughs> some guy's got a we got a, a he pulled his ankle, he pulled his yeah, it was something else. It was funny. They all pour out of it, but every single one of them was laughing. Every one of them was laughing and having a good time. And uh the state president was the captain of the Victorville Police Department. And he was there. And uh, we had to take three vehicles back. <laughs> <laughs> but those kids those kids just like you remember the outings and stuff those kids will always remember that there's a there's for sure them that still check in with me from time to time and mm -hmm. and say hey, brother Heston, remember that toyota uh, is it still around i put almost five hundred thousand miles on that thing and uh, it'd probably still be running right now if i hadn't figured i'd better sell it before you know before i ended up having to replace the engine but um it's moments like that like I said, following the spirit. I can't tell you that the spirit told me to pack 13 people in the back of a Toyota, but it worked. You know, it worked. You guys worked. And if it weren't for that, if it weren't for Don and Dean and and uh, Rob McKendrick and Jeff Coombe and Larry Crosby, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. that guy that guy stepped in and helped us a lot with the bishopric. Because you've got Rob McKendrick and Jeff Coombe, who didn't quite understand how I made it back from Lake Powell in five and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they they tried to do the math and it didn't add up. <laughs> but um, it was it was men like that that uh, that had a, uh, a, a an interest in um, in sharing with you guys. That's what made it work. Um, two way street all the way. Yeah, I really miss you guys. Very cool. We miss you too, and obviously we all we miss Don dearly. Uh, but it, yeah. it's great to get together to reminisce and make sure it's recorded and documented so we don't forget, and yeah. we stay close to each other. That we continue to make the effort to stay in contact with one another. Yeah, yeah, Derek, you gotta, yeah, Derek and Nick, you gotta give me your your phone number somehow. Text it to me or something. Yeah, yeah. So, for sure. so when I'm passing through there, I'll I'll uh, figure out where you are and we'll meet up. Yeah. Uh, the group text that I sent earlier has everyone included, so. Okay. Yeah. You know what? You know what's funny about me and Jeff is I think I run into Jeff more at the temple than any other place. Yeah. Like for some reason we run into each other there all the time. Not yeah. even inside, just walking around the outside. Yep. yep. Like a and Sunday I, afternoon. I tell Audrey all the time. I said they haven't figured it out. They still let him in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell them. See I'll get released from the van? elders' corps. Get out of the van. It was parked around the back. That was Ted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Man. I'm sorry. I messed no. up a nice moment, Dad. <laughs> no, it's all good. No, I just think it's funny. Like, I think I've run into you four or five times just randomly yeah. at the temple. Yeah. Kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. I still love the L.A. Temple. I got to tell you boys that there's something special yeah. about your first temple. You know, we have, we oh, have yeah. the Redlands Temple, the Breas coming up and stuff like that. Um, been all over the place and seen lots of temples. But uh, that L.A. Temple is something special. It always is. So whenever y'all are anywhere near L.A., you should always go by and just remember remember uh, young young brother Pineda here stealing <laughs> the fence to go get a Slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I did not yes. realize that was the uh, Lord's yes. fence. Yeah. <laughs> that's also an urban legend too the gate at on santa monica boulevard was open so i just kind of sque sque oh, okay. so in case anyone else want i'm sorry versus the ruin the story but yeah i didn't actually hop oh. double fence <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's yeah. good um are we good to wrap up tonight anybody else have any else other stories to share i mean we've gone pretty late but the reality is that I mean, we could go all night if we wanted to but yeah we should we do this to, again we need, to bring, we need to bring this thing in close and personal someday where we're all in the same place at the same time whoa and jeff if, whoa 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 hands off all right hands and if off we, if we all have to pile into the van and drive <laughs> over to david's house that's what we'll do uh, and, we'll, and before we leave we'll ask him to check the back taillight for us to see if it's not out <laughs> remember wait i remember we went i think one of our utah trips like we all got out to pee and then we jumped back in the car and you started taking it. We started taking oh, off. He had you remember about it. Well, you had to talk him into even doing it to begin with. You're yeah, like, he no, wouldn't no, we'll, be in front of us. Yeah. So you're like, no, we'll block it. We'll block the road. The we'll make sure no one sees you. Sprinkling all the way down. Freak, man. I swear, I think Nick still has that picture, man. I, somewhere yeah i do and there was like a no dumping sign with you squatting yeah. On that. Yeah. yeah oh man oh wow yeah find those pictures we have, we have a little too much information about ourselves don't we <laughs> <laughs> all right albert thank you very much for okay, facilitating well, thank this. you guys uh tad Derek, yeah, albert. Nick, jeff this has been so much fun thank you guys for joining me tonight uh again indulging me in this little hobby that i've picked up i mean i think it's kind of fun just to uh, chat with friends and uh, talk about anything we want. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. That's great. Okay, well, thanks everybody. So you've been listening to the Casting for Fun podcast. Thanks everybody. All right.